Coming out of Thieves Town, you want to hold angle down right until you line up with the wall, then start your dash immediately. Continue to dash down until you reach the bottom of the first wall on your left, then pause buffer to bombs. This buffer will help ensure that you have the correct placement when you place the bomb down. Out of the menu, optimally you want to hold angle down left, then place a bomb down. I actually prefer to hold angle down right, which you see in the video, just in case I pause buffer too late, and that way I don't either nudge the wall below me, or I enter the pathway on the left and then have to move back right. Walk down slightly and then pick up the bomb. Walk down and to the left with it, lining up with the bottom right corner of the hut. You want to toss the bomb to the left, throwing it inside of the hut. A great buffer for timing to avoid taking damage from the bomb blast is to slash your sword, move down below the house, start your dash and then turn left, canceling below the entrance and entering cleanly. Head down the stairs and grab the first 300 rupee chest in this segment, and then make your way out of the hut. Side hopping off of the left ledge can be a few frames faster if done optimally, but most runners don't do this because the ledge is extremely small, making the side hop very difficult to perform. Out of the house, hold angle down right until Link is to the right of the fence. Continue to move down until Link is lined up with the top of the tree line turn right and start a dash which will avoid grabbing the trees. Putting Link on this position will maximize your dash as you will be able to clear the sign without nudging at the end of your dash. This is a great spot to menu buffer to the mirror to avoid dashing too far to the right. When you have cleared the tree line on your left, move down to the next screen. There are a few different ways that you can talk to the frog. The first one that's shown in the video here is optimal, but a little bit more difficult to perform. So what you wanna do is continue holding down until you get to the edge of the mountain, start your dash, and then turn left. Don't move any further left than you need to in order to maximize your dash. Hold left and cancel with an angle down left input at the tree to cancel your dash. Continue holding angle down left until you are below the tree, then transition to moving left until you clear the mountain slope. Then press angle down left briefly to align Link with the middle of the top rock. Pick up the rock, throw it as you take a slight step toward the flower. Then you want to menu buffer to the mirror. This will actually give you more time to see if Link is on the right pixel to talk to the frog from above instead of picking up the flower in front of you. You should be able to see either one or two pixels of grass between Link's shield and the bush in front. At this point, you want to press A to talk to the frog. Now, talking to the frog from the top rock can save you approximately 15 frames on this screen. Once you get to this point, you want to mash all four face buttons for the first two text boxes, then mash L and R to clear the final box as you are holding right. Hold right until you get to the mountain slope, then switch to angle upright and continue until you are able to move up along the right side of the tree. Start your dash, then turn right as high as possible to avoid using diagonal movement afterward. Cancel your dash with an angle upright input and hold these inputs until just the back of Link's hat is inside the dirt path and then exit the screen up. The reason why this is a pretty good visual cue is because it lets you know where Link's placement is before the screen transition so you don't nudge on the next screen up. For the safer and more consistent frog talk, you want to do the exact same inputs on the screen as the optimal. You can also menu buffer at the end of this dash to help prevent bonking into the tree. But you want to pick up the second rock from the top and then talk to the frog from there. Continue to do the same inputs as before as you make your way to the next screen. Dash up immediately and then cancel to the right when you are aligned with the bottom of the sign. Dash right to the next screen. This screen may look a little bit different to some because there is a different strategy that we are doing known as the blank smiths. It makes the entire sequence of getting the tempered sword and mirroring a few different times a little bit more consistent and RTA friendly. So what you want to do is mirror immediately, move up to stay aligned with the grid, start your dash and then turn right. Staying aligned with the grid will give you a chance to stop your dash on the right frame to be perfectly aligned with the stairs. Cancel your dash with an up input as you are aligned with the stairs. Double pump left and right as you move up them, and then once you are at the top, you can optionally cancel stair leg with a left or right input to save a few more frames, and then enter the Smith's Forge. Hold up to activate the cutscene, and mash through the two text boxes with all four face buttons. Hold down to exit. Now this next screen is very, very precise on what you do. 
hold off, and then re-enter the house. Dash up immediately to talk to the dwarf. You will not bonk on the dwarf if you dash into him, but you want to make sure that you start the talk as low as possible. Mash all four face buttons for the first text box, then continue to mash Y, X, and A through the three choice boxes. Mashing B here can cause you to swing your sword. Hold down and cancel the last text box with L and R to dash out. Start your dash immediately down the stairs and cancel with a left input when you are below the fence at the top. Dash left to exit the screen. Hold right to re-enter the previous screen. Dash immediately to the right and cancel with an up input once you are aligned with the middle of the stairs. Use the same pumping movement as before. Dash up and press A to talk to the dwarf as early as possible. Mash all four face buttons on the first text box, then hold down and cancel the last text box with LR and A to dash out. Walk down until you reach the top of the stairs, then slash your sword and perform a spin dash. Exit the stairs cardinally to activate super speed and move left until you see the warp and then move angle down left into it. After re-entering Dark World, hold left to exit the screen. This comparison video provided by Blunt Bunny shows the Old Smith strategy versus Blank Smiths. The Blank Smith strategy saves approximately 30 frames over the old way and is also much easier and RTA friendly. It takes away much of the human error that can occur during this sequence, like bonking on the rock, trying to cancel your dash too closely, first frame rock pickup and throw, along with multiple mirror placements to save time. The final part of doing the Blanksmith strategy, you can elect to perform a spin dash coming off of the stairs to go directly into the warp versus just dashing down the stairs, as this only saves a few more frames. After the screen has finished transitioning, you want to press left and A on the same frame, then continue holding the A button to charge a dash and tap up. This will result in a successful fence dash. Apathy duck. Cancel your dash with a left input. It is optimal to cancel the dash with an up right input when you are aligned with the top row of bushes in front of the sea house. It is a little bit more RTA viable to cancel with a left input and then start your dash through the bushes. Optionally, you can double pump out of the door frame while holding up and then you want to walk left while pumping down until you clear the right side of the wall. Use the floor tile or the black line on the wall as a visual cue. Start your dash and turn up. Cancel this dash with a right input when you are above the wall. Hold right until you are slightly past the bed and then transition to an angle upright to open the second 300 rupee chest from the far left side. Hold angle down left out of the chest cutscene until you are below the bed and then hold left until you clear the wall. Start your dash, turn down, and then cancel with an angle down right input right at the bottom of the wall. As you make your way to the door, you want to snap into it to exit cleanly. And please, 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 for all that is holy in the world of this game, if you are dashing six times in this house, stop it. Just, just stop it. It's time to stop. It's time to stop, okay? No more. It's time to stop. All right. <laughs> I had to add that in there, because when I see people do that, it drives me banana sandwich. Hold down out of the house until you are aligned with the top set of bushes. Start your dash and then turn right. Cancel your dash with an up input when Link's left side is aligned with the green square tiles on the left side of the pathway. Start your dash up and cancel with a left input when you are above the wall on the left. Walk left until you are aligned with the center of the pathway. It isn't worth it to pump down here. Start your dash and turn up to exit the screen. From the screen transition, hold angle up right until you are above the tree line. Walk right until you are aligned with the left side of the skull rocks, which is right above on your right side, or an alternate visual cue is when Link reaches the first notch in the tree line. Start your dash and turn up. Cancel with an up left input just as you are about to hit the tree stump and then enter Skullwoods cleanly. 
there is only one bad RNG on this screen that you have to pay attention to that the left Moblin gives you. If he stops on the left squiggle line of the dirt path and throws a spear to the right, that is the bad RNG. You need to walk up a few steps to the dirt squiggle line and then start your dash. Alternatively, you can tap A twice to start your dash from the same spot right at that tree notch instead of walking up. Do whatever is most comfortable for you. And then, of course, continue the same movement as before until you enter Skull Woods. Start your dash up immediately. Continue holding up and cancel with an angle up left input when the tip of Link's sword is about to touch the wall. Continue to hold angle up left until you are above the tree line, then walk left until you clear the wall by the rope up. Start your dash and then turn up. Cancel with an up input when you are just about to pass the middle bush. This up input to cancel your dash works because you dashed next to a pit. After canceling the dash, align yourself with the top bush, start your dash, and turn left. Hold left and cancel with an angle up left input when you are aligned with the center of the rib cage. Tap up to face away from the skull and then dash up. You can maximize your dash here, but it can be very difficult to avoid grabbing the skull on the left. Before dashing up, make sure Link's left ear is at least one pixel to the left of the spine, or you will miss dash killing the Ropa above. Dash up and hit the Ropa, then cancel with a left input as you clear the rib structure. If you don't dash high enough and then you cancel the dash with a left input, the nudge here at the top of the rib cage can lose quite a bit of time. Walk left until you are on the left side of the spine, then start a dash and turn down. Cancel your dash with an angle down left input when your sword is touching the wall. Hold this angle input until you pass the wall, then move down and enter the dungeon cleanly. Okay, this is the Mummy Statue Room, the greatest room ever created in A Link to the Past. And that is a quote unquote from Mr. Greenham himself. Just kidding, this room is the actual spawn of Satan. So, what you want to do is walk up and slash when you are close to the jellies. You want to make sure that you stay on the grid. There's no need to change your movement if the right jelly starts to move away from you. Pick up the pot and move down as you throw it. Hold angle down right to position yourself below the right statue and then walk right to the bottom right edge. Pull the statue down about a half of a tile. The visual cue for the topmost pixel is a pixel of space between the tile line and the bottom of the statue. Then move to the right of it and hold angle up left to push it left with your shoulder. Once you get to the top of the statue, transition to angle down left and start wiggling up and down as you push it to the left. This will increase your movement speed as you're pushing the statue. You can have up to two pixels of space showing between the statue and the top of the brown block. Once the statue is in place, move up and around it. The statue can actually be up to three pixels off of the switch on either the left or the right side. Pull the statue up until it is aligned with the bottom most notch on the railing. For bad jelly RNG, stay on the grid and throw the pot to the right instead of down to make sure that you kill the jelly. As you are pushing the statue, if the mummies are going to get in your way, you can attempt to slash them out of the way but it may not knock them back due to very goofy hitboxes and other things that are unknown in the world of ALTTP. If you need to pull the statue, it will be much slower than pushing it because you can't use diagonal movement and this may result in missing the Wallmaster cycle. If by chance the Wallmaster comes down due to bad RNG while you are pulling the statue up into position, you can simply face up and slash the Wallmaster as it's falling to avoid crossing the switch and hitting it unnecessarily, which you can lose on average about 15 frames just by doing that. Also, shout outs to Stuck Mummy. He is a gem. Hold angle upright out of the door until you clear the wall and start your dash up. Cancel your dash with a left input when you are at the top of the wall and make your way to the right side of the chest. Mash L, R, and Y to clear the text and mirror out of the room. With bad RNG here, the mummy can be sitting right in front of the doorway. What you want to do is dash immediately out of the door and continue with the same movement as before. By any chance you don't have clean movement or you want to play it a little safe, once you clear the right side of the wall, take a quick step up before starting your dash. This will ensure that you don't get hit by the mummy when he walks to the right. 
hold down to exit the dungeon. So fun fact, speedrunners, you can actually hold right to clear this entrance. How neat is that? Uh, wait, uh, uh he hello? Was, was that Clippy? I, I miss you? Walk right until you clear the skull head, and then hold angle upright until you are aligned with the left part of the rib cage. Start your dash and then turn up. Cancel your dash with the right input. Start another dash going right through the ropa. Cancel this dash with a down input on the right side of the rib cage and then dash down. Tap right to cancel your dash when you are aligned with the top row of bushes and dash to the right. Once you clear the bushes, cancel your dash with a down input and then dash down. If you want to do this dash optimally, you can cancel the dash with a down left input once you clear the top right skull, then move left and then pump down toward the entrance and enter the dungeon cleanly. There are a few different bomb jumps that you can choose to do in this room. The first one shown is going to be the most optimal. It's the Skullwood's early bomb jump. It saves just over a full second. So what you want to do is hold up and then menu buffer to bombs. Continue holding up until you clear the door frame and then change to an angle up left input and plant the bomb. Move slightly past the bomb, pick it up and start moving angle up left toward the locked door. Stop once you reach the keyhole of the locked door and then throw the bomb against it. Slash your sword, hold angle upright until you reach the middle of the pit, and then you want to use a dash buffer to prevent Link from falling into the pit before the bomb explodes. Navigate to the big chest, slashing any mini moldorms out of your way as necessary. Open the chest from the far left, hold angle up left until you clear the barrier, then walk left and fall into the pit. Hold down to exit the dungeon. The sword spin bomb jump, you want to hold angle up left out of the door until you are aligned with the left side of the barrier. Hold straight up and walk toward the pit. Menu buffer to bombs when the bottom of Link is aligned with the bottom of the barrier. Plant the bomb out of the menu, slash your sword, and continue holding it. Once it's almost fully charged, you want to walk toward the pit, and once you see the slipping animation, hold down away from the pit and then release your sword. This will actually put Link on the last possible pixel before falling into the pit. Turn right before the bomb blast so Link will be facing in the direction that he'll be moving after being blasted over the pit. Grab the fire rod as before. For the bonk bomb jump, the movement starts the same as the sword spin, but after planting the bomb out of the menu, you want to hold angle up left until Link reaches the left wall. Adjust as needed with sword or dash buffers to place Link within 6 pixels of the edge of the pit. While facing up, start a dash before the bomb starts to explode, turn left and bonk against the wall to be blasted over. If you see that Link is within 2 pixels of the edge of the pit, the bonk is not needed for this strategy, and you can actually just place Link above the bomb and get blasted over the pit. One small advantage of the sword spin in bonk versions of this bomb jump over the early bomb jump is that your bomb has a chance to kill one or both of the mini moldorms as well as using your sword beams or the release of the sword spin. If both mini moldorms are blocking your path on the left side after opening the chest, it is actually faster to fall in the pit on the right side than to slash your sword to kill one or both of the mini moldorms. If you're low on health, you can optionally bonk over the pit instead of falling in it at the cost of about a second and a half. And then you do have to remember if you do that, after exiting the dungeon, you will not have your iframes to walk through the ropa on the next screen. Hold right out of the skull entrance using your iframes to walk through the ropa. Change to an angle upright input until you clear the top right skull. At this point, you want to read the movement of the top ropa on the left. If it stays low, take the top bush route. If it stays high, take the bottom bush route. With either route, dash through the bushes and cancel with an angle up left input and walk to the middle of the rib cage. Face up and start a dash. Dash through the ropa and cancel your dash with a left input. The rest of the movement on this screen is going to be exactly as it was before until you enter the dungeon cleanly. Hold angle up left out of the doorway until Link reaches the brown block. You can elect to double pump out of this doorway as well. Switch to straight left until Link clears the statue, then hold angle up left. Once Link reaches the wall, move straight up and then snap into the door cleanly. So what you want to do in this room, optimally, is just dash left immediately into the next room. Stay neutral on the d-pad and start a dash. 
this will keep you aligned with the grid. By being on the grid here, you have three good frames to stop your dash and clear the spike. As you get closer to the wall, just passing the spike, you want to menu buffer to fire rod on one of these three good frames. And then after getting out of the menu, hold straight up. If you pause one frame early, you can hold angle up left out of the menu to ensure that you clear the spike. If you pause on the very last possible frame before Link bonks into the wall, you will need to move at least one pixel to the right in order to actually grab the pot. Walk to the skull pot, pick it up, wait until Link collects the key, don't move up because you'd be wasting movement, and then start walking down. Once Link clears the spike, hold angle down right towards the door and exit cleanly. Please, for the love of God, don't dash down from the key pot. I will hunt you down and take away your cartridge. Hold left out of the mouth and start a dash once Link faces left. Keep holding left and cancel with an angle up left input when the tip of Link's sword touches the wall. Move up left until Link clears the corner, walk straight left until Link is aligned with the right side of the ribcage, and then start a dash. Turn up and cancel this dash with a right input, shooting your fire rod at the bottom fangs of the proboscis. Turn up before the cutscene starts, and then hold angle up right to enter the dungeon cleanly. This strat saves a few frames and has an 8 pixel window. The safer method is to cancel your dash with an angle upright input when Link exits the ribcage. Move angle upright toward the entrance and then fire rod the proboscis. Start charging a dash before the cutscene begins. Continue holding A after the cutscene to start the dash and enter the second part of Skullwoods. Hold angle up left out of the door and start a dash after moving at least one pixel to the left. You can move all the way until Link is aligned with the right part of the left rail before starting your dash. Aligning this dash will cause Link to nudge the block above, which will allow you to key dash the locked door at the top of the room. There are a few different RNGs in here. For the good RNG, of course, you can just continue dashing past the friendly fire snake and be able to hit a key dash. There are also a few bad RNGs. One you will see is where as you are dashing up, the fire snake decides to go down. So you'll have to cancel your dash, move under the block, wait out the fire snake for the top portion to pass you because of course that is the only portion that Link takes damage from. And then you'll have to move back left, starting your dash and then nudging the block on the way up to successfully perform the key dash at the top. The other bad RNG is where it looks like the fire snake is gonna go down. So you have to stop your dash, but it just continues to go up on the left part of the wall. Once the fire snake reaches the top of the door, it does have a chance to bounce back and forth a multiple number of times. And Link can have a dance party waiting for the opportunity to enter the locked door. And all I gotta say for this RNG is just dance it out, homie. There are a few different pathway strategies that you can do in this room. The first one is going to be the optimal right pot. So what you want to do is hold angle up right out of the doorway and slide along the right pot and grab it from the right side. Walk up along the edge of the pit. Of course, Link maintains his normal walking speed and throw the pot at the jelly if it gets in your way. Turn and walk right at the top of the pit and grab the bottom pot. Throw it quickly and then snap into the door cleanly. You can elect to do the left pot strategy, which can help prevent falling into the pit accidentally. Hold angle up left out of the door until Link is aligned with the left pot. Lift it up and as you are moving up, quickly throw the pot. You can begin holding angle upright against the right pot until you clear the pit without any worries of falling in. Once you clear the top of the pit, hold right as before, lift up the pot and then snap into the doorway cleanly. The Mummy Hellway has a few different strategies. One is, of course, the optimal, and the other one is best known as the Joe Strat, which is very fast, but also very safe. So for the optimal strat, what you want to do is dash right out of the door, cancel your dash with an upright input, and then shoot the fire rod twice to the right, once to kill the mummy, and the second time to light the torch. At this point, you want to line link up with the right wall, start your dash, and then turn up. This dash will go through the mummy above you. Cancel your dash with a right input once you are aligned with the wall on the right. Pick up the bottom pot and toss it upward at the next mummy, making sure that you are above the red strip on the floor so your next fire rod shot to the right will hit the torch. Quickly light the right torch, and then light the left torch as you move back toward the center of the hallway. Take a step to the left to make sure you are clear of the mummy pathway above you. 
start your dash and then turn up. Optimally, you can elect to do a fire rod dash, which is gonna light the last torch and then start your dash as you turn left through the door. But by doing the fire rod dash, it will alter your movement once you enter the next screen. For the Joe Strat, which is a little bit safer but fast, start walking right out of the door until you reach the edge of the wall. Fire rod to the right twice. Start your dash and then turn up, canceling your dash with a right input once you are aligned with the top of the wall where the indentation starts. Fire rod the mummy on the right while walking right and then continue the same movement through the rest of the room as the optimal strategy. If you did elect to fire rod dash out of the previous room, you can walk left and slash the mini moldorm if it goes down toward Link. If you dash through the previous room, you will need to walk left out of the doorway, turn up and slash the mini moldorm. If the mini moldorm goes up, walk left out of the door frame, hold angle up left toward the middle vine and slash it to reveal the doorway. If the mini moldorm does get in your way during that movement, you can slash it out of your way as you are facing up. Also, depending on what type of movement the mini moldorm does at the top of the screen, you can just select to just walk straight up toward the top of the wall and then walk left and you can slash the vine facing left or if that mini moldorm turns around on you, you are able to slash that enemy as well. Hold left out of the door until Link has passed the left part of the door frame. Start your dash and then turn up. A good strategy for this part is to menu buffer to the mirror. This buffer is optional, but it's extremely helpful to ensure Link is in the correct position to knock the mummy into the spike. A great visual cue to use here to ensure that you are in the right position is to line up the tip of Link's sword with the top of the wall evenly. Out of the menu, turn right, walk a half of a tile, and slash the mummy into the spike. Because you have position Link slightly above the mummy, this will give you the sword damage and the spike damage. Continue holding right during the first sword slash and move right another full tile before slashing the mummy again. You can stall where the key drops to grab it, then walk to the door or optimally start your dash after a short delay, grabbing the key, getting close to the door, and then cancel the dash with an angle down right input, unlock the door at that angle, and then snap into it cleanly. Walk right out of the doorway, then hold angle upright until you have cleared the top of the barrier. Walk right until you pass the barrier, then walk down until you have cleared the spike. Briefly hold angle down right when you are aligned with the jagged edge of the pit, and then walk to the right to fall. Mothula can take damage from various items, but for the no major glitches category, the two likely ways of damaging Moth are the Tempered Sword and the Fire Rod. Link takes damage from Mothula, the beams that Moth shoots out, and the spikes. Mothula will not take damage if you hit him into any of the spikes because the spike damage does zero against the boss and will override your damage. A great general practice is to always hit Mothula away from the spikes and toward the middle of the arena. If Mothula is hugging the top of the spikes, you can elect to do a poke dash to deal tempered sword slash damage and that also avoids the spike override. Mothula must take 32 hit points of damage to be defeated. Of course, spikes do zero. Fire Rod does four. Dashing with Tempered Sword, Slashing, or Poke Dashing all do eight damage. Mothula's attack is on a timed cycle, so if Mothula takes damage from any source, even if it is zero damage because you hit him into a spike, the timer will actually reset and Mothula will not attack. It can be worth it to attack Mothula for no damage in order to prevent an attack or being hit just in case you are low on health or in a really bad position. Hitting Mothula into the spikes and overriding his attack can be used in many different scenarios, but the one that most players will utilize is when the floor is moving away from Mothula as he's on the top, so you're not able to either sword poke him at the top or get to him in time. So by the time that you move up to hit Mothula, he will be ready to attack. So it's always a great idea to hit Mothula to override and reset his attack and have him bounce off the top of the spikes down toward the middle of the arena. After dropping down to Mothula, once you land, the first thing that you need to be aware of is which direction the floor is moving. For the optimal double hit, you want to charge your sword and line up inside of Mothula. The visual cue is to line up the tip of Link's sword with the bottom of the middle block. Once Mothula's antenna are lined up with the bottom of the block, 
start your dash into the block. If done correctly, this will result in an immediate double hit. You will need to readjust Link's movement a bit depending on which direction the floor is moving. At this point, Mothula only needs two more hits with the Tempered Sword to be defeated. By any chance, if you still have the Fire Rod equipped, you can use that to potentially knock Mothula from the top of the spikes. Optionally, you can use the menu buffer to mirror in this fight at any point. This allows you to judge Mothula's movement after the double hit to avoid uh, spikes or dodging any beams. After Mothula is defeated, hold the wall if possible to reduce any lag. If Mothula is killed too high on the screen, you're going to miss the opportunity to automatically grab the heart and then you're going to have to wait for the animation of the heart to drop. If Mothula is defeated at the top of the arena, catch the crystal with the shadow covering Link's eyes. And if Moth is defeated at the bottom of the arena, make sure to catch the crystal with the shadow at Link's feet. By doing this, you're actually going to save time in the crystal cutscene.